Hello everyone, Tony Richardson here with TutExpert.com. Today I'm going to show you some secrets, a couple of different methods for creating your own retro photo filter effects. You can use any photo and with a few layer adjustments, maybe a photo filter or two, you can create similar effects to the popular retro filters on Instagram. Now you've seen probably several different types. There's a 1977, there's a uh, Nashville, um, there's a toaster effect, and all have a few different uh, ways to achieve the effects. So I'm going to show you three different similar methods to create similar effects, um, and then you can use those methods, combine them in any method you want to create additional effects. So this is the after effect of a few photo filter layers and this is the original image so this image is unedited um, there are no effects applied to this but with a few layer adjustments you can see uh, you can get some nice results so we're going to start with a new document here I've already got the background layer in and one thing I always do is I make sure I duplicate the background layer so now you have the original information uh, untouched and then we can apply all the effects to the additional layers above now first thing uh, you may want to do, like for the toaster effect I believe, you want to kind of highlight the center of this image. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can, in Photoshop, I'm using CS6, you can use the lighting effect. And if you use the lighting effect, you can use a spotlight and create a hot spot right in the center. Now this intensity seems a bit high. I'm going to go somewhere around 35 I believe and we'll go ahead and select OK. Now there's another method for doing this. Um, I can show you real quick here. I guess I'll, uh, I'll turn that off and I'll add an additional layer and then I'll go over here. We'll grab our gradient tool and it's on radius. Let me go ahead and select. Alright, so it's going black to white which we want that in reverse because we want it from white to black and then what I'll do is I'll click here, drag to about right here and let go. Now let's go ahead and drop the opacity a bit and see what we got. Yeah, so the highlight's going to be right above his uh, snout there. I guess that's what you call it. Trunk, snout, nose. Alright, and then uh, the layer adjustment will be overlay. So um, the, uh, sometimes I crack myself up. The outside edge here, you're getting some unique colors by doing an overlay. You could do a soft light if you wanted to kind of take a bit of that away. And you can see there's the before and the after. It does bring a little highlight to it. So that's another method. We're going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to drop that, um, down to the bottom for now. And this top layer, I'm going to set to the luminosity. All right, so it will color the edges a bit. I'm going to drop the uh, opacity down just a smidgen and I do want that to blend a little better so I'm going to duplicate the layer and then I will choose screen for the duplicate layer but it looks like it's blown out the image a bit so we'll drop it somewhere in the 15 to 18 range somewhere in there. And Yeah that's not too bad. Now I'm going to apply a couple layer adjustments and as I said, I always, um, if you've watched my videos, I like to use layers and layer adjustments. I don't want to damage the original photo in any way. Um, what we're going to start with is sepia. And we'll have our, uh, as they call it here, density. We'll, we'll keep it somewhere around 70. You do want to preserve the luminosity when doing this. And that's not too bad. It seems a little hot, I guess, in my opinion, or a little overdone. So I'm going to drop that down maybe in the... 50 range somewhere 56 55 somewhere in there all right and I'm going to add another photo filter and what is this one going to be well this one's going to be uh, actually I'm not going to do that I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to leave that one there I'm going to shut it off and I'm going to add a vibrance channel and I'm going to bring that below that photo filter. I want to get some color back in here, but I don't want the saturation to be too high. So let's add some vibrance. We'll go in uh, mid 50s and then the saturation really, this is a powerful plugin, so only about 10 for that. And uh, 
there you go so that'll help a little now we'll turn this uh, photo filter back on I think I'm gonna go with yellow okay now with this one you don't want to go too high uh, somewhere around mid 30s because it, it's it's uh, it's kind of a sharp color there okay so we're getting somewhere now I'm going to show you a much quicker method to getting uh, a few of these effects in a minute but this is the if you want to if you want to take um, a longer approach and have a little more control on on just about every part of the picture this is the way you want to do it so now we're gonna back out a bit and I'm gonna add uh, let's see I'm gonna add a new layer and we're gonna grab our ellipse tool and this is gonna be my vignette so I'm going to click and hold and let go at the bottom. We're going to go to select and inverse our selection, but we're going to fill this with edit, fill, and we'll make sure that we have black selected. All right, now let's deselect. And then uh, many of you are probably asking why I didn't feather this. Um, I don't like to use the select modify feather uh, selection because it, it bans. It's not a true feathering in my opinion. So I use a blur. And I'll go to Gaussian Blur, and it's already set to 30, so that's not bad. But as you can see, it's a little, uh, it's a little cropped on the inside. So we'll transform it, Control or Command T, and hold down Shift and Option. If you hold Shift, it'll constrain it. But if you hold Option or Alt, um, you see that it'll, uh, it'll constrain it consecutively. So it's really nice, and that'll give me just some burning around the edges um, to kind of highlight and frame the center of this. Now, let's go for the gold here. This is my favorite part, the levels. Um, I, I, I've done this several ways, and if you use curves, there's nothing wrong with using curves, and you do get some neat effects, but to get similar effects to the Instagram, you'll want to use levels. And the reason is because right now you see all the data is in there in the color, but you see how you have these spikes with some data missing in the middle? That's really what your optimum goal is in the end because you're looking to have um, a retro effect. And back then they didn't have digital cameras, they had film. And it just couldn't get the information that you can get today. So I'll show you one thing you're going to want to do. This is the shadows on the left, midtones, and the highlights on the right. And then you have your output levels right here. You can just kind of brighten up the shadows just on your R RGB channel then go to red maybe bump up this uh, mid-tone just a bit and then go to your greens and then pull down your output just to the right and I mean not too high and then your blue you can go a little further you can bring that in maybe somewhere around there and uh, that's about it right there if you want to let's say it's a little hot you can bring the, the opacity down uh, maybe somewhere around 80 and I like to go ahead and put everything in and then start playing with the opacity and the levels and that's a that's a really nice effect right there I'll tell you what we'll uh, duplicate the first original image and that's it and we'll shut it off and that's our final effect not too bad alright so now we'll try a couple other things let's go ahead and we'll start over I'll uh, bring this highlight above so we have our little highlight there and we'll change him to uh, overlay maybe and we'll leave soft light on soft light okay so now we have a little hot spot there and I'll show you another method you could go straight into the levels just right from here um, one thing is go uh, straight to the green and bump it up go straight to the blue bump that up um, you could probably go to the red and take your midtones up and pull your shadows down a bit and there you go you got a you've got a ready-made image I mean the only thing left to do is if you wanted to frame it do the same thing we'll go ahead and uh, just give it a shot here we'll let go we'll do an inverse select and then an edit fill with black uh, we'll deselect that and then we'll blur it with a Gaussian blur at around 30 for the radius. We'll zoom out and control or command T while we're holding shift and option or shift and alt. And there we go. Now, another beautiful image. Now, I'm going to show you one other method. All right. So we're going to get rid of all of these. And this is just for another 
uh, neat effect. It's um, one that Instagram has on its apps. Um, the name for some reason escapes me, but if you're on Instagram a lot, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to go and we're going to grab a new fill layer. And this, we're going to want a radiant uh, gradient, a radiant gradient, a radial gradient. So you're going to go the new layer, fill, gradient fill, and then the style is going to be radial. Okay, we're not going to reverse because it's going to be in the center, but we're going to want to choose a nice um, color for that. So let me open that back up. We'll click here, and the main color, it goes from black to transparent. So you have black here to transparent. Well, we're going to want to change that black color to something just underneath red and purple. So right in the middle there, and about 25% down, 24% in, ballpark it. Right about there, click OK, click OK, click OK. And let's change that to overlay. All right, so got a purple heart. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go and, uh, nope, I need a new, um, yeah, there we go, gradient fill right here. We can do that, another gradient fill. We're going to click radial. All right, so if you saw, I just went to my gradient fill adjustment layer. And we're going to reverse this, so now it's going to be on the outside, but this is where our blue comes in. So we're going to double click, and you see it goes from transparent to black, so transparent to center, all the way to black. But the black color, we're going to want that to be the blue color now. And between blue and purple, that's where we can get our best effect. And then maybe 25% in, and maybe a third of the way up or so. Okay, click OK. Click OK and click OK. Now, it's a little hot, so we're probably going to want our opacity somewhere around 50 for both of these. And we'll click OK and there we go. Uh, yeah, that's coming together. And the same thing, you just add a new layer, uh, grab your ellipse tool, no different than the other, and uh, we'll edit, fill black oh yep look at that that's crazy inverse that's why you inverse edit fill and we'll choose black we'll deselect I would use my hotkeys but when I'm doing this video if I were to press control and any of the normal hotkeys I use which I'm used to um, it will pause and duplicate things and delete things so um, I can't use my hotkeys when I'm recording a video. And we'll transfer, and I'll hold Shift and Alt, or Shift and Option, and there we go. So now we got some really nice, nice colors there. Now, one thing you could do, let's say you've got these fill colors, you could, right in between, if you wanted to get a little more sepia, you could easily add a hue and saturation layer or just a photo filter and kind of warm that up with a sepia somewhere in the mid-range and then kind of play around with how far you want that opacity maybe around 30 so if you take that off you'll see um, that's our original colors with the blues and reds but you could turn it back on somewhere around 30 and just kind of kind of mute them just a bit and uh, these are overlaid so they're overlaid on top of this photo filter which you could change to overlay as well and just kind of have them all blend all the way to your original layer. So now you can take these these techniques for all three of these um, photo effect filters and then intertwine them. Maybe this effect use a radial gradient for um, hot spots or uh, lighting effects. Um, you can also add lens flares and all kinds of neat options. So. Uh, this is Tony Richardson with TutExpert.com. If you're on the site, go ahead and check out another tutorial or an article. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can watch another video and get yourself some knowledge.